Vidhi Kalra and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. So today's topic is Bergson and Samuelson's social welfare function which is a highly requested topic by so many of you. So I've tried to put this complicated topic in a small nutshell and yeah, let's get started. So coming to exactly what is the Bergson and Samuelson social welfare function, it was propounded in 1938 by Abram Bergson in his article. This theory provided a new approach to the welfare economics. In fact, many welfare economists, they failed to provide a satisfactory solution to the problem of maximization of social welfare and that is when Bergson and Samuelson stepped in. One thing to be noticed is that it is an ordinal index of social welfare, that is it gives ranks and not numbers like Carnal utility. The function of the utilities of individual is written as W is equal to U1, U2, U3 and so on and so forth. And two other things which should be uh, you know, remembered while studying this is that they focus on interpersonal comparison. That is the ability to sum up the utilities and uh, involving value judgments. And the last thing which is very important to note is that welfare economics is a normative study. So moving ahead to some assumptions which really need to be kept in mind while studying this. The first one being that social welfare depends on each individual's wealth and income. That is how his wealth and income are. The social welfare totally depends on that. Secondly, it assumes the presence of external economies and diseconomies with their consequent effects. Thirdly, something which I mentioned before, it is based on ordinal ranking. And lastly, something which is really very important under this function is that interpersonal comparison of utility involving value judgments are freely permissible. So moving on to the characteristics before we move on to the graphical part. So like the Puritan function under the Books and Samuelson social welfare function, the social welfare depends solely on the individual's utility and not the utility of the whole community. Secondly, individual utilities depend on individual's own evaluation of welfare. For example, A might get a lot of utility from consumption of alcohol, but B might get very little utility or maybe zero or negative utility from the consumption of alcohol. Thirdly, with different set of value judgments, social welfare will be different. Moving ahead to the main graphical part of this function, which shall give you the whole crux of this function. So we see that we measure A's utility on the x-axis and B's utility on the y-axis and we have four social welfare curves. They are something similar to, you know, so indifference curves in the form of W1, W2, W3 and W4. We notice that initially A and B are both on point Q. This is point Q on the first W1, okay. We see when we move from Q to S, there is an improvement in the social welfare due to some policy changes. We tend to move from Q to S so there is an improvement and secondly when we move from R to S there is again an improvement why so because we know that when we move from a lower IC curve or you know social curve to a higher one there is an improvement now we see if we move from R to Q that is R is this point and if we move to Q we can clearly see that now B's utility will be higher since we've moved to Q whereas A's utility has fallen so you know A is kind of worse off but because R and Q are both on the same, you know, this welfare curve, the social welfare remains the same. That's what we studied, right? That all the points on this curve will give us the same level of satisfaction. We can also say that, you know, the loss of A is compensated by the gain of B. This is what I have highlighted in green. Now, next, another situation is if we move from Q to S. Now, here is Q. And if we move to S. We can clearly see if you are moving from Q to S, B's utility will be falling, right? Whereas A's utility in that case has increased. And in this case, we see that A's gain is much more than B's loss. So that this is all about, you know, the crux of Bergson and Samuelson social welfare function that we are doing interpersonal comparisons and thus drawing value judgments. So lastly, coming to the concept of grand utility possibility frontier, which is GUPF over here. So through the usage of GUPF, we obtain a unique optimum solution or the maximum social welfare. And what exactly it is, it is the locus of the various physically attainable utilities, given, you know, the technology and the state of preferences. Here on our graph, we see that VV dash, that is the line in red, is our GUPF. And we see that a social IC curve, you know, these curves, as I explained before, W1, W2, W3, this is the tangent to GUPF at point Q. So at this point, it is tangent to the VV dash curve. And Q is the maximum social welfare point, which is also known as the constrained bliss. 
we should know that all points on BV dash are economically efficient. Now coming to point R. So point R is on W1 curve. We see it is lying on the VV dash curve. It means it is economically efficient. But because it is on the lower IC, so it is better that we stick to Q. You know, it is on W3 and here it is on W1. Moving ahead to point S. Now where is point S? Point S is on W2. But we should see one thing that since S is not on, you know, the VV dash curve, it is economically efficient. But because it is on a higher IC curve, now here it is on W2, it is better that we choose S than choosing R. So this is what we are studying. Now supposingly we cannot achieve Q, then we will choose S. That is what Bergson and Samuelson is trying to say. That, uh, you know, if Q is unattainable, the society accepts inefficiency in resource allocation and then sticks to S. So this is the whole and the crux of the Bergson and Samuelson function. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in the next video pretty soon.